Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to go on a tour of my brand new studio. First, I'd like to give you an update on the state of the channel as we head into 2022. So it's the end of December, and we're coming up on the next year. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is about one year old at this point. It started in December of 2021 with my first video, which was a tour of my gaming table. Since then, the response has been, well, amazing. Now we're sitting at just under 1,000 subscribers at this moment, and are coming up on 4,000 hours of video watches. This video that you're watching right now is actually our 87th. I've been really, really pleased with the amount of content I've been able to do and with all the great responses. The community of people who build in miniature is just phenomenal. In that time, we've built a lot of war game models. We've built some models inspired by my travels. We've looked at scale modeling techniques. Basically, we've talked about the whole width of possibility for when you're building a miniature. Moving ahead in 2022, we've got lots more great content planned, and we're going to cover hopefully some interviews and some other corners of the world of building in miniature. So now without any further ado, we're going to take a look at my new studio with a studio tour. Let's check it out. So this is the new and fabulous studio space for miniature landscape hobbies. And uh, it really does beat the uh, design I had before, which was set up with a single table in my furnace room. Now I've spread out lots of space in order to really get the maximum content into my videos and to have the best possible layout for filming. So it's set up in three tables, kind of in a U shape. This one is sort of a spare table. When I teach people to paint, they can sit across from me at the table. And I also primarily will be using this table for laying out terrain. My cutting table with the uh, foam cutter. And there's my just some cutting mats. Looks like my son Mitchell is preparing some uh, Napoleonics down there at the moment. If you watch the Spruepocalypse video, there is the there is the part sorter, the infamous part sorter, filled with pieces cut from sprues of all kinds and descriptions. My new foam cutter, foam cutting knife, got that for Christmas, really appreciate that. So down here, I'll just give you a bit of an idea of the layout. This container here is primarily for decals and stencils brings us to the main table, which is the painting table, of course. Airbrush, airbrush compressor, that's brand new. Just got it for Christmas, really appreciate it. It's great to have a tank on my airbrush, finally. Things are just laid out in order of importance, so I can get to them from my work surface as I go. So you'll see brushes and water basin are nearby, the ever handy Airbrush cleaning and flow improver is right within immediate reach. Here's my weathering pencils, one of my favorite items in the whole world. I'm extremely lucky to have family that supports my hobbies. My mother and father-in-law got me the entire range of weathering pencils for Christmas. They must have been watching my videos to know how much I really wanted these. Regular paints, so there's my acrylics. I'll use just about any brand I can get my hands on. I'm not too picky. I tend to, it tends to be a little easier to get Vallejo in my area. I do like AK paints. Army Painter stuff. It's more or less over here. I love their shaders. Um, the regular colors that I find are a little hit and miss, but their shaders are great. The ever important to me a panel liners uh, for my Flames of War projects when you're painting 1 100 scale tanks. Do yourself a favor, get some black or dark brown panel liner 
and let the capillary action do the work for you. Airbrush paints. All the important tools, pipettes for transferring enamels and um, glues. Lots of extra, lots and lots of extra glue sticks, although since I started to set the workspace up, I'm not exactly sure where my glue gun is. There's cups for mixing, basic tools, another new addition, some um, Eptylon 502 uh, oils, haven't used them yet, can hardly wait. I'll uh, get to that in a future video, you can probably see me make mistakes with it. <laughs> then uh, pigments, dry pigments and fixers, the all important weathering enamels. Varnishes, very important stuff. Masking putties. There's, uh, I've got the lights adjustable for the camera. Hot light, complete with uh, time and date because I tend to get a little carried away when I'm at my workbench and I need to stay caught up with the real world. This is the one of the most important tools I've got hangs my cameras over top of my work surface. I use it in every video. Virtually every video you've ever watched of mine will have been filmed on that, at least partially. The basic tool is always close at hand, the glues, the accelerant for super glue, the knives, and the pin vise. Now, some people call their collection of unpainted models their pile of shame. I don't get it. To me, it's the pile of glory. Hopefully, it's always building. There's my uh, current uh, collection that's waiting to be used. A couple different armies in there. Some Napoleonics in, on top. And, of course, so much Flames of War and Team Yankee, which I absolutely love. I always like to have plenty of models so I know what the next project is. There's my pink styrofoam close at hand, always so important for terrain building, probably the number one component for terrain building. I do have some black foam core tucked away, but I tend to have it weighted down so it stays straight. This is my sort of overflow cart of um, painting goodies, mainly for terrain, that stuff. And then here's the cart for basing, so all my essential products for basing I can roll it from one surf work surface to the next so that it's ready no matter which section which table I decide to work at so there you have it my new studio space stay tuned we'll have lots of videos using this space to uh, prepare more models as we head into the new year well that's it for this video I really appreciate everybody who's watched Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. If you'd like to help out with the content, then please consider joining my Patreon. The link is in the description. My patrons can have access to the STL files for some of the different items I've featured in my videos, including the awesome Miniature Landscape Hobbies theme movement trays, and can even participate in painting lessons with myself, model building lessons, or can even receive custom pieces of commissioned terrain. If Patreon's not your thing, check out the link and you can head over to my Etsy store. At my Etsy store, you can see many of the different projects that I do right in the videos. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. And as always, remember to keep building life in miniature.